be a pilot. But I was too young and too short, and there were no female captains. And my dad said, be patient, he said, just see what happens. But I took my first lesson, came down from the sky, and told my father I'd fly for the rest of my life. Then I got my first job, flying for a mortician in a tiny bonanza, just a corpse and me. Five dollars an hour for flying dead bodies. I had to climb over the faces just to get to my seat. And suddenly the wheels lift off the ground. is falling backwards. I am suddenly alive. Suddenly I'm in the cockpit. Suddenly everything's changed. Suddenly I'm not too young or too short. And the passengers in the back don't complain. <laughs> Suddenly I fly in company charters. Suddenly everything's high. Suddenly there's nothing in between me and the sky. American Airlines had the prettiest planes. So I applied as a flight engineer. They said girls shouldn't be in the cockpit. Hey lady, hey baby, hey. <laughs> the ground was so green. The flight attendants weren't my friends back then. And they said, are you better than us, do you think? But I kept getting higher than the World War II crew. They retired and the girls all thought much higher of me. 1986, the first female American captain in history. Suddenly I've got my wings. Suddenly all of those pilots protested me while they can get their own drinks. <laughs> Suddenly there's no one saying stay grounded, looking down, passing them by. Suddenly there's nothing in between me and the sky. Suddenly I've got an all-female crew. The news talked and made headlines across the world. Suddenly. Suddenly I am a senior instructor and somehow I'm 51. <laughs> Suddenly I'm flying from Paris to Dallas across the Atlantic and feeling calm. And suddenly someone on air to air traffic says at 846 there's been a terrorist action and the one thing I loved more than anything was used as the bomb. Sky.